So firstly, what is onboarding? Um, for some of us, we may have heard of the term. For others, may not have heard of it. Um, others may know, know it more as something called induction. Um, so what I wanted to put here, first of all, is a kind of very psychological and business-based term. It says that onboarding is a mechanism through which new employees acquire the necessary knowledge, skills, and behavior to become effective organizational members and insiders. Well, that's, that's got a lot of different terms in there, but simply what we're saying is it's the process of inducting a new individual, um, typically over the first six to 12 months once they've been appointed. So that might be an individual coming in externally, or perhaps somebody who already works within the organization uh, moving into a different role. I'm not gonna give you a very extensive overview, but some of the importance of the onboarding process um, a lot of research has found that successful onboarding programs um, leads to increased engagement, longevity, and ultimately performance. The other kind of benefit of this onboarding um, process that we put our new employees through is also a stronger leader um, report relationship from the offset. And that's really where the onboarding report is going to come in. So that's where we're kind of focusing. Yes, the, the kind of um, big light green circle there is brilliant and they're kind of the out, outputs as a result but the kind of focus in is this looking at leadership um leader manager and employee relationship and how we can we can use that to get all those things in that big circle um i'm not going to overbear you with kind of statistics and things but this was um I found a very interesting document that was showing kind of the statistics of the cost um, of not having a very good onboarding process, um, negative effects on turnover, expenses um, to replace perhaps what we would classify as wrong hires. Um, and a lot of that, I mean, you can look on the internet, there's, there's lots and lots of st statistics showing this, but um, without onboarding, it's suggesting that as much as 20% of staff turnover happens within the first 45 days of employment. So that's that's literally as soon as people are joining and it can cost, I mean, this is in dollars, but 3,000 to 18,000 um, dollars just to replace one employee uh, without onboarding. On the flip side, um, with onboarding, so it's showing that the, the biggest positive is improved employee performance. So. One statistic found that 54% of organizations with a standard onboarding process experience 54% greater hire, new hire productivity. There's also a range of other um, kind of statistics there that, that really demonstrate the benefits of having this thing that we're calling in, onboarding or induction, just something that's getting the new starters um, up to speed with everybody else and, and really kind of bringing them into that organization, making them feel um, engaged, ready to develop, and ultimately to perform as well as they can do. So here we bring into our identity onboarding, um, in brackets, new starter report. The reason it's got the new starter is this specifically is being for, uh, for new hires. There is a similar um, development-based report, which uses a similar format. Um, but what the onboarding report is looking at is for, so we've selected an individual, so we've assessed them, we've selected them, and now how are we really gonna get the best from them? And what we're ultimately saying is that for people coming into an organization or into a new role, it's really important to kind of understand what makes them them, their preferences, and how the manager and the new employee can work together to, to form that um, partnership to hopefully boost productivity, performance, engagement. So the identity onboarding report is it's designed to be split into two main sections. We are rank ordering the personality preferences um, and then we take it into a second section, which looks in a little bit more detail at the strengths and considerations around those personality preferences. So it's looking mainly at the development of that individual, but starting as soon as they sort of walk through that door um, into that new role. So before I take you through the report itself, um, many of you may have already heard of identity or be using identity. Um, for others, that might not be the case. Um, so just a little bit of overview. Identity is a psychometric uh, personality profiling tool. So it's all based on self-perception. Um, an individual will fill in the questionnaire online um, and it's normally a 
statements kind of around um, preferences and styles areas related to personality. So on this, this slide here, you can see there's 36 um, key areas within, within the personality uh, kind of profile. Um, and what we're doing is they answer six questions um, on each scale to, to decide where they should be ranked on a one to 10. Now, one to 10 does not mean one is bad, 10 is good. Um, but instead, it's looking at the kind of working population and where that individual um, personality preference sits in comparison to the average. So the average would be, on, in this case, um, stems five and six. So the white box is down the middle. That's typical of most people, so no real preference in either direction. Whereas if somebody, for instance, on this one, uh, independence is coming out as a, a 10, that's suggesting that they, they have a very strong preference. They like to be different, uh, prefer their own approach, um, stronger views, maybe impressing those sorts of things and happy to follow, follow their own directions. So that's, that's kind of a very, very brief overview of how we get all the data um, from somebody sitting the personality questionnaire and then how we we're going to use this information to create a useful report that we can use um, to have discussions. So here is a little bit more, it takes it into a little bit more detail. Um, this is the area of interpersonal. We break this down into forwarding self and focusing on others. Um, and the reason I put this slide up is you can just read, so the kind of bipolar um, scales being so for social presence less outgoing versus somebody who's highly gregarious extrovert very outgoing and for this individual Sam sample um, they're kind of bang smack in the middle so typical of most most individuals no real preference in either direction if you are interested I mean I'm, I don't have time this morning because this is a 20 minute session but if you are interested in learning a little bit more about identity um, and you weren't able to join me for the last um, webinar we took into a lot more detail and I went through the identity profiling tool um, or I can give you alternative information afterwards so, so do let me know because um, this is quite a whistle stop tour of identity. Moving on though um, the actual report so the identity onboarding report as I mentioned, we, we break it into two sections. So this is work preferences, um, and these are rank ordered. So as you can see on this slide, um, it produces, so based on their identity profile, it then rank orders where they have the strongest preferences, um, slightly strong, so just strong preferences, and then marked preferences, and gives a little bit of information about that area of personality. So for instance, the top one here is independence. Um, and the suggestions around what that individual is is likely to be like based on on their self perceptions. So, for instance, Sam Sample here um, suggests he will need a good deal of autonomy and latitude to set his own direction. Sam will respond well to being given ownership and responsibility for making decisions. Now, as a manager, we may have only met this individual once, maybe twice at an interview. So having this sort of report before we go into um, a meeting with that new employee, so Sam, um, might be very, very useful. So we can use that as a manager, finding out where they have particularly strong preferences um, and more marked preferences, but also giving this to the new employee who may not all actually be aware of where their real strong preferences lie. It's very hard to sort of look inside yourself, um, but actually it's much easier if we have something physical that we can look at and discuss. So we use the work uh, preferences here to sort of stimulate that discussion. It says here as well, it's all very strength based um, because it is development. This person has been appointed for the role and it's now about how can we get the best from them. So we use, um, it's very strength based looking at for every, for every scale, there's a positive and there's a negative potentially or areas of consideration. Um, and this aspect is very positive based. The second section that we mentioned um, was about looking at those strengths and considerations. So this takes each of the areas of the identity profile um, and then breaks it down a little bit further to, to look at perhaps when Sam's style might be an asset 
but also when it might be something that we need to consider or be aware of, um, so certain situations where it could actually have more of a negative impact, and we want to avoid those sorts of things. So for instance here, um, it's saying that when working on a task, Sam should be able to work independently and concentrate on a task for a longer period of time, perhaps requiring less support from others. Brilliant. So for some tasks, that would be great, and it's good that we are aware of that. At the same time, when working on a task, Sam may be seen as less engaged with the team's interests. This may perhaps be due to a preference for getting on with things alone rather than waiting to work with others. Now, if we've got team-based tasks or things that they need to work collaboratively with, um, that could be a, could flag up as a little bit of an issue, especially in, when working in a wider team. And what we might want to do from this is, is to have a discussion um, and just kind of work maybe its areas that they want to develop or just be aware of. And as a manager and as the individual, it's great to have that insight. So this works through the six different sections of identity, giving us a little bit more information about that individual who we may not know particularly well at this point. So um, we're going to move quickly kind of on to report applications that the, the actual report, if you're interested, I can send you um, a full sample or as well um, for some people who haven't done identity as yet as a tool, um, we can send you a free link to have, to have a go at filling out the questionnaire um, and generating the reports for, you, for yourself. Um, so you can have a look at and see how much you agree or disagree with the with the information that comes out and and actually how you personally um like to approach your work report applications um i've kind of alluded to to some of them already um the first one here says increasing general insight so as a ma new manager of an individual it's great to be able to have a tool that perhaps gives a sort of summary overview of that individual before we can sit down and have a say one or two hour discussion with that person um, as the the recipient as well it's also sometimes easier to look at something and say yeah actually this is this is me or alternatively as personality profiling is not 100 percent reliable all the time um, or accurate all the time is to the flip side and say actually I don't agree with this or maybe you weren't aware I wasn't aware of this I wasn't aware that I was I have such a preference for working independently I think of myself as a team player yes you might be but it may be that naturally you find it easier to work alone than than to need other people and it's great to be able to to stimulate that discussion to have those and to look into those questions I guess the second um, kind of application, important application, when looking at the onboarding process as a whole, is this idea of conducting um, onboarding meetings and development review meetings. So the first one here is um, the onboarding report is a great way to have that initial onboarding meeting with the new starter and the manager um, and to consider, I mean, it gives you some examples of things to consider so it might be exploring their perceptions of their strengths and developments um, perhaps using a strength finder method so that's the kind of colored uh, square chart here looks at drivers drainers cautioners and target zones so it might be we want to to use the report to actually think what are my what are my strengths that energize or what are your strengths that energize um, also, what strengths do you have that perhaps drain you, that you're, that you're good at, that they take a lot of your resources away and things like that, or, or tasks that you don't particularly enjoy, but, you, but you're very good at? How can we, how can we balance these? Cautioners, um, personal weaknesses, perhaps areas to manage, things that we might be aware of or might not be aware of, um, that we're not as good at, but we're probably not going to want to develop. We don't have an incentive to develop them, or we don't need to develop them. It's great to be aware of them, though, and to be able to put in place management or support um, so that these don't become an issue. And the target zone, similarly, these are areas that we might actively want to improve. So they might be things we want to put into a PDP or an action plan. And we can do this within the first couple of weeks rather than waiting three months, six months or even a year before somebody has an appraisal. And we sit back and say, oh, we well, should have probably looked at this beforehand. Um, it's also a great way of thinking about considering that individual's key customers, priorities, 
critical incidences, um, resources, and maybe training opportunities that, that they are interested in and we, or that might be very beneficial to the individual um, and the organization as a whole. Most importantly, I think the really nice thing about the onboarding report is that it's a great way to, to build that sort of working relationship between the employee and the manager from, from the start, um, to be able to sit down and kind of have an open and transparent conversation um, about personality and preferences and working styles and how, how best we can, can use the strengths um, for that individual going forward. As mentioned as well, um, it's also useful as a, a development review meeting. So perhaps after two or three months, just sitting back and finding out how that individual um, has been getting on and maybe looking at sort of discussing key areas. So their level of engagement and commitment, clarity of expectations, um, empowerment and resource or, and their performance management. Um, and again, just looking at using using the report as a sort of springboard for that discussion so that we can develop them over the next three months. Ooh, nearly up to time. So benefits um, of using the onboarding report. This table, I mean, there's a lot of information there. I don't expect you to be able to read it all at once. Um, but what it's showing is that actually there's benefits across different stakeholders um, and the organization as a whole. So for the new starter, there's a range of different benefits. So in terms of building the relationship, clarifying understandings, increasing awareness, um, setting up development plans, and also voicing concerns or key considerations going forward. As a manager, on the flip side, it's also an opportunity to learn about that individual, um, to build that open, trusting working relationship, hopefully, and the setting expectations as well. It'll allow them to gain some insight into, into that individual. Often it's very hard to just talk about yourself, but if you've got something that's written down as a starting point, it's a great way to then sort of stimulate that discussion and also to explore, explore it as well, using open questions to find out more about that information that they may not reveal if you just ask them directly. At an organizational level, um, as I've mentioned, the kind of relationship between employee and manager, that's been shown to be really important. It's also offering transparency for everyone involved. So everybody knows from the start expectations, preferences, things like that, and can work together effectively. So long term also, it's been shown as included in um, onboarding processes to increase engagement, satisfaction, and uh, ultimately performance long term. So we want to reduce the staff attrition and turnover, as we saw at the start, it's very expensive. Um, and also just we want our employees, they're really important to our organisation. So the more we can get them engaged um, and developing, the more effective they are going to be within our organisations. So very quickly, um, just to kind of summarise, um, accessing identity. identity Anyone can access um, identity. We use a bureau system, and the it's part of our onboarding report is part of our recruitment package. So rather than just selling one report, we feel that it's much more beneficial to to everybody involved to have the sort of pre-interview candidate report and onboarding report. So we're kind of tackling, as you can see from the, the sort of step process, um, the assessment side, selection side, and the onboarding. So all three reports um, as part of the package are just £65. Um, so you get a real resource base for, for, that, for that figure. Um, important to mention, there's no annual licensing fees. Unlike other um, tool providers, often you have to pay an annual license fee. Um, Identity works on a paper link service. So the link is... Um, the email that is sent out to the individual with the username and password so that they can access um, the online platform to fill out the questionnaire. That all then comes back to us and um, we generate the reports. So if it's individuals, um, so you might be wanting to uh, recruit a certain, I don't know, manager, and then you're you're looking at 
interviewing um, a number of them, so the pre-interview reports, candidate report perhaps for unsuccessful hires, and then also the onboarding report for that successful candidate that we're taking forward. So you get all of that um, with the different reports, and we will do all of the administration side of that. Um, so yeah, so that's the recruitment package, um, and the onboarding report is part of that. So just to finish, um, to summarise, I guess, if you are interested in learning a little bit more, this is just this webinar is designed just to be a sort of taster or overview um, of the onboarding report and the onboarding process. Um, please do contact us directly so we can I'm I can set you up with an identity link so that you can have a go at using the tool because that's the that's the easy, the best way to find out what you think of something um, is to have a go yourself. We will also send you um, your reports, and if you need, would like to have a discussion with us, then we can give you some feedback um, about the reports. Also, if you're interested, please visit our Test and Assess website. Um, there's all the products online, a little bit more information, um, and re yeah, receiving reports and things. As well as that, we also offer training, so um, blended learning or face-to-face -face, um, training, BPS accredited, um, training in occupational testing um, and that would allow you to to use identity um, to have your own account rather than using the bureau system so if you're interested in something like that please please do get in touch and I can take you through that in a bit more detail 20 minutes goes very very quickly so thank you very much for listening um, my contact details are there my email address is laura at questpartnership.co.uk Alternatively, please visit the website, www.questpartnership.co.uk. Um, we do have a kind of 10 minutes uh, question and answer session. So if there's anything I haven't covered or you'd like some more information, please do drop me, drop me a question. Um, the link for this webinar will also be sent out to you. Um, and if you are interested in having a go at identity, then, then please uh, do get in touch. Many thanks for listening. Um, apologies at the start, the, the issues with the technical um, being able to hear, hear myself, but hopefully you've been able to hear the rest of this webinar and I hope you can join us for the next one. Thank you.